Hey, my name is Sundar. I'm the VP of products at Cisco App Dynamics. I lead product for all things Cisco FSO platform and our cloud native observability products. Today we have Michael from Canary. Thanks for joining me, Michael. Pleasure. Very cool. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what Canary does. Yes, I will. So, I'm Michael, as you said. I'm the CEO of Canary. We are uh, not so old of a company. We're 12 years old now. Very cool. Um, but we have basically only been focusing around the observability area uh -huh. since we started up um, in 2011. I'm super excited that you all decided to join the FSO platform early access program and the fact that you're launching this module, this capacity and kind of forecast planning module. Tell me a little bit about, more about it. What does it do? What's the target market? What are the target users? I would love to hear Absolute, more. Absolutely. So our whole idea for this was around Okay, you see this platform that you, that you built. Mm -hmm. um, and actually one of the first platforms we encountered, which is sort of built for, ex for ex being extended, uh, to have sort of outside uh, solutions being brought in. Yep. And we, we, together with some of the guys in your team, identified yep. uh, that, well, with regards to forecasting and bringing mm -hmm. in some machine learning into the platform, it wasn't really there. Yep. Maybe we can do something around that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we identified this to be also, you know, um, what is the use case? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, really what we, we focus around capacity yep. because obviously it's still important. It can be for anything from, you know, cost calculation with regards to, to, to cloud consumption. Yep. It can be around, you know, proactiveness when it comes to just, just operation and, yep. uh, and the likes. Uh, but it's really bringing the ML power into the FSO platform, mm -hmm. uh, but still, Still not you know, utilizing the platform as it's intended to, yep. but just adding on this as an extension, uh, really. I love it, I love it. That's exactly the reason why we, why we kind of designed the platform the way we have. We talk about eight degrees of extension of the platform, and being able to kind of bring your own ML models is absolutely one of the degrees of extension, so I'm glad you're kind of leveraging that. Um, talk to me about how you use ML. We talk about ML a lot these days. Generative AI is a big deal, so what's, What's the secret sauce? What, what do you use ML for? Uh, what, do you, what does ML do for you? Well, ML is, is, is yeah, as you say, uh, I think it's a, these terms are thrown around uh, ML or AI or, yep. or uh, different sorts of, of terminology. Yep. But really, the hard part about ML, I think, is uh, figuring out what is the most effective algorithm to be utilized for the specific metrics or use case that you have. Absolutely. So we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how can we automate that process as uh -huh. much as possible, utilizing various sources like you know, mm -hmm. AutoML, mm -hmm. uh, figuring out you know, which, which of the more popular algorithms should we try and test, yeah. and sort of bring that into the process as we roll new metrics out from the FSO platform to, to be included. Yeah. So a lot of time is spent in the figuring out what is the most effective algorithm, yeah. um, testing it, yeah. Um, and then after that, it's really simple. Uh, you know, that's more of the complicated part. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. taking data out of the FSO platform, that's pretty simple. Yep. Um, bringing it back in is equally simple, mm -hmm. also extending the model. So mo yep. most of our time was actually spent on tuning and optimizing on that particular ML part, which then brings us, actually already we see results now, we sort of were reaching north of 90% accuracy Very on, cool. on a lot, of, on a lot of, the, of the metrics. So I find that, uh, very positive so early. Excellent. And is there a specific set of environments that you focus on for at least the initial reads for your capacity planning? Well, the, the, the easiest one to communicate, I would say, uh -huh. are the you know the classic ones. Yep. Uh, you know, anything that can be zero to one hundred percent, like mm -hmm. uh, you know, utilization of something yep. like a disk or a, yep. or a network link yep. or anything yep. like yep. that, yep. Yep. or CPU. Right? Yep. These are, but the only reason for that is really just to, uh, we need to of course test it out, we need uh -huh. to build it, we need to get it out there with customers. Yeah. But in reality, we haven't really limited yeah. the, the module to that. Yeah. It can basically be applied to any metric you want uh, out of the FSO mo model uh, yeah. and well, the solution itself. So, but uh, yeah, the intention is to build on capacity, maybe yeah. now build some more supporting, you know, and when it comes to more visuals, bringing yeah. in the whole, I think some of our next steps is more around self-service, yeah. also on yeah, the platform. So we need to narrow down and not you know, go too wide uh -huh. uh, and really make sure that we get that value out on the other side before yeah. we start to build. That further. makes perfect sense. So in some ways, 
for all of the things that we think in terms of capacity planning. Finally, infrastructure capacity planning is still one of the toughest problems in the IT space. So if we can solve for that, then the rest, everything becomes easy. And to your point, making it easy and consumable for users is far more important than adding more and more areas where you can actually do planning. So I think that makes perfect sense. Um, what was your experience with the platform itself? You're one of the first. What would your message be to other solution developers who want to actually develop on this platform? I think, uh, <clears throat> well, you're going to spend way less time actually developing what you were thinking about than you're going to spend, I would say, it's pretty simple to get on the platform. Mm -hmm. um, see my, my lead developers talking about, you know, um, when they actually start to get it. Mm -hmm. It took, you know, it took a couple of days before they were into the, yep. the whole ecosystem. Yeah. But actually, um, we spend much more time trying to figure out what we're going to build yep. than actually building it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> this whole solution concept mm -hmm. that you sort of embedded yep. into, into the platform, yep. really just, you know, when it comes to then your usual development tasks like, you know, uh, keeping versioning where it should be, yep. uh, having all the different components sort of, um, you know, really integrated into your GitHub, to having all of this sort of, you know, the normal DevOps cycle yep. really just embedded. That helped a lot. Yeah. So yeah. in the end, I would say <clears throat> key key things we, we found really powerful is really around the extens extensibility of it. Yeah. And the flexibility of yeah. the model. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 No, that's actually great to hear. And you mentioned the solution. Right? It's actually interesting. The concept of a solution was something that we have kind of built into the heart of the platform, and what it allows everybody to do as solution developers to really literally ship a package, right? And you can think very distinctly about data collection and having a data collection package around it. Actual extraction and being able to do data manipulation and you can give instructions to the platform on how you want to do data manipulation and then do queries. So all of that can be packaged together into a solution. So to your point, we've spent a lot of time thinking about what it means so that working with the platform becomes really, really simple. And it's, it's kind of good to hear you bring it back because it feels like a very deep technical capability, but to make it real for solution developers is very difficult. So it's kind of good to hear you kind of referencing that and that making life easy for your developers. Definitely. In right. fact, one of the things that I'm super excited about is building and bringing this to the market is just step one. I would look for, like, this is an opportunity where we are doing things together, but co-marketing with you all, right? Bringing this together to the industry working with our sales team and your sales team working together. Those are all great possibilities of making it real for our customers. So that's what excites me, not just the technology portion, but making it real for our customers and for our users. Yeah, and actually seeing that return. Yep, absolutely, Indeed. absolutely, absolutely. All right, this was absolutely a pleasure, Michael. Thanks a lot for joining. It was and a pleasure. It's been great working with you, and I look forward to continue doing that. Likewise, cheers. cheers.